While the compound interest formula is super useful, it's only good if you have a big lump one-time deposit that you make and then just leave it alone for a long period of time. That's not very realistic in terms of how most of us are able to save over time. And so it's much more likely that maybe every paycheck you could set aside a little bit of money or um, every month you're going to contribute to your savings plan and then let that accumulate over time. That way we can put in kind of smaller doses, which is probably much more realistic to fit into a budget. So the formula that we have for this is called, we call this the savings plan formula. And this is used when you're starting with zero dollars and you're hoping to end up with lots of money by the end. As we go forward, notice there's a lot of variables that we've seen before. A is gonna be the amount in your account your ending balance, All right? We're hoping this to be lots of money. Now, the new variable that we have here is D. D is the regular repeated deposit. It's how much money you're putting in over and over and over again. So this is a many time deposit, unlike the compound interest formula, which is just one. Uh, all the other variables mean the same thing that we've used before. R is our percent interest rate. N is that number of compounding periods per year. Um, and T is the number of years that you can continue this investment plan. All right, let's consider the following situation. Suppose that every quarter at work, we get a quarterly bonus and you decide that you want to start saving some of that money. So you're gonna set aside $500 from every bonus and put it into your savings account. Your savings account is going to, we found one that earns 3.5% annual interest per year. And we want to see how much we're going to have saved up after 15 years of working with the company. All right. So with this information, we should be able to substitute our values into our savings plan formula. Uh, A is what we're trying to find. D is the regular repeated amount of our deposit. In this case, we're putting in $500 from every bonus. So 500 is my D value, and it goes here. Now, if you remember, I talked about how important parentheses were in entering things uh, in order to follow order of operations and for our calculators to be able to do these things correctly, especially um, in Desmos. This is really user-friendly. Make sure that you use all of the parentheses that are showing up in our formula here to get the correct answer. So uh, A is equal to D, our 500 repeated dollar deposit. Then it's one plus my R value, which is the 3.5% interest, but make sure as always to write that in its decimal form. So 0 0.035 is my R. And then N is the number of compounding periods per year. We don't necessarily even see the word compounding here, but because we're making a deposit from every bonus and our bonuses are happening on a quarterly basis, that means we're going to be making four deposits a year. So that every time that we make a deposit, our interest uh, amount is going to be being recalculated. So here, my N is equal to four. Close the parentheses, then we're going to put in parentheses as our exponent, four times a year for 15 years. So four times 15 up here in the exponent. Then back down on the main level, we're gonna have a minus one and close the parentheses. That whole thing is gonna be divided by R over N, which is 0 0.035 over four. Notice that these are the same thing right above and below each other. So it's a nice way to double check that you're entering all your values in correctly. 
So once we've analyzed our situation, figured out what variables go in which positions, all we have to do now is to evaluate this expression. Again, it looks really crazy, but using a program like Desmos, where we're able to type things in the way that we see them, it's pretty straightforward as long as you follow all of the parentheses rules as we go through. So let's see what this would look like. Okay, pulling up Desmos. Here's my calculator. And let's see what happens here. We're going to start with 500. Then we need two sets of parentheses. It'll be 1 plus 0 0.035 divided by 4. Now notice I'm at the bottom. If I want to make sure that I come up to the main level to close off those parentheses, I can use the right arrow. So just make sure if you if it, something looks wrong, then you just delete it and, the, and then fix it so that you can move over to the level that you need. The next thing I need is in the exponent. So I'm going to hit that A to the B button. And I have more than one thing that needs to go in the exponent. So I'm using parentheses for that. And it's going to be 4 times 15 in the power. Close the parentheses. And then the next thing that I need is I need to be back down on the main level. You can always use this right arrow to move back down. Now I want to subtract 1 and then close the parentheses on the top. Now I need this entire expression divided by what's on the bottom here. So do the division there, and we're going to divide by, in parentheses, 0 0.035 over 4. Use your right arrow there to get so that we can close the parentheses next to it. And notice everything looks exactly the same as it is here. Powers where the powers need to be, minus 1's back on the main level, and this 0 0.035 over 4 in the denominator. My answer is going to appear over here on the right-hand side, and I get $39,234.46. I do recommend that because we're dealing with money, I usually round my answers to two digits after the decimal place. So in this case, if I deposit $500 four times a year into this interest-bearing account, at the end of 15 years, I'll actually have $39,234.46 which is pretty awesome because just thinking of doing a $500 deposit um, four times a year seems uh, not like a lot compared to how much money we end up with at the end of that uh, based on our interest. So that's kind of the way the savings formula plan works. And it's really useful in terms of figuring out how things are going to go. Now, sometimes we want to know what the amount that we should be depositing to get something to happen. Suppose in this example that we want to save up $10,000 for a vacation. Oops. In five years, we want to make deposits every month. into an account that earns 3.25% interest every year. Now, in this case, what I want to find is how much would I have to con contribute regularly so that I'll end up with the $10,000 that I want. So I am looking for D this time. Okay, so let's go through our situation here. I want to find D, the regular amount. The amount that I want to end up with at the end is A. So in this case, A is my $10,000 that I want to have. Um, five years is my T. Again, make sure that value is in years. My rate is the 3.25% interest. Make sure you change that to its decimal form. And my N is the number of compounding periods per year. Be careful if it says annual interest because that's just related to the rate. What we're looking for is how often those deposits are being made. In this case, they're being made every month. So that happens 12 times a year. So we're going to be using N equals 12 into our formula. Okay, so with this in mind, we should be able to fill in every variable except for the one that we need. Here is my formula again. I'll just copy it so we have it easy to reference.
And now we put in all the numbers that we know. My A is 10,000. D, I don't know, so we'll just leave that as D. Two sets of parentheses, one plus my rate, 0 0.0325 over 12, because we're doing that monthly deposit. In the power, we're going to have 12 for the monthlies times by five years. So we end up with 60 payments altogether there. And then we're going to minus one and close the parentheses. We're going to divide this whole thing by R over N, which is, again, that 0 0.0325 over 12. We put all those numbers in one more time. Now, this time I want to solve for D. And remember, anytime you're solving an algebra equation, you need to get everything else that's on the same side of the equation out of the way. This is a lot of numbers. However, again, notice that D is being multiplied by all of this. So I can simplify all of these numbers here by putting them into my calculator and come up with a really simple equation to solve. 10,000 equals D times whatever this answer is going to be. So let's go ahead and plug all of that into my calculator here. All right, so if we clear this out, in this case, we're going to start and we're going to do two sets of parentheses, one plus 0 0.0325 divided by 12, because we're doing monthly, arrow over to close the parentheses, and then we need in the exponent all of the 12 times 5, and we'll make sure that's in parentheses too. Now we need to get back down to the main level for the minus 1 in the formula and close the parentheses. I need this whole thing to be divided by 0 0.0325 over 12. And we can see everything here matches the way that that looks. And I end up with 65.05. Now, even though we've done a lot of work, this isn't the answer. Remember, we're looking for D, and D is not by itself yet. But right now, I can see that what I have is just D times 65.05 is equal to 10,000. So to finish getting D by itself, I can divide by the 65.05 on each side and see what I get. All right, so back to Desmos again. This time, what I need to do is 10,000 divided by that's 65.05, so 10,000 here divided by, now the 65.05 happens to be my last answer, so I can just use that ANS button to copy that answer over. And now I have my value, $153.72. So what does this mean if I, every month for five years, If I deposit $153.72, I will end up with the $10,000 I need for my vacation. So this allows us to do some planning, right? Um, if we have a certain amount that we need in a certain amount of time, we can solve for what that deposit would have to be on a regular basis. All right, so that's our savings plan formula. Uh, our last financial formula that we're going to be using in this chapter is the loan formula. This one, interest is working kind of against us, where in a savings plan formula, we're going from zero dollars to lots of dollars. With the loan formula, we're going to owe a lot of money and we want it to get down to zero dollars. So we'll look at how that formula is a a little bit different than this one and some examples.